Good evening. My name is Erica Romero. I'm the project manager for the town of Monument, and I'll be assisting. I've been assisting in this project from the start. Hi, my name is uh, James Adams. I'm from Forsgren Associates, and I am the engineer on the project. My name is Jay Swinson. I'm with Nora Concrete, and I'm the project manager for this project. Uh, my name is Rogelio Alvarado. I'm with Blanco Inc. Uh, we're a sub to Nora. Uh, we'll be actually installing the water line and reconnecting uh, the services. So we're a sub to Nora. I'm uh, Tom Thonish, Director of Public Works for the town. Hello, Steve Sheffield, Assistant Public Works Director for the town. So we'll go ahead and jump into presentation. Um, so I didn't know if everybody was at the previous public meeting. Um, so for this presentation, we'll just Go ahead and kind of review the um, kind of the general overview of the project, um, kind of what we're going to be doing, and then we'll talk about uh, some of the things that we've kind of updated and changed since that last meeting as well. So again, much of this stuff was covered in the last public meeting, but. Uh, as part of this presentation, we'll talk about a little bit about the project need. Um, what are the components on the project? Uh, uh, the first major component is the water line replacement. Uh, the other are the street improvements. And then we'll also uh, talk about uh, what to expect as we go through the project. And at the end of the presentation, we'll talk um, a little bit about the schedule. I'll have a general overview and then Jay will talk about that um, in a little bit more detail. Um, so, obviously, with the residents that live there, they understand um, probably pretty well the need for the project. Um, roadways in pretty bad shape. Um, uh, lots of cracking, alligator cracking, things of that nature. And then also the, the uh, um, frequent breaks in the water line are another primary driver of the project. So, the first major component is the, is the water line replacement. Um, this is a sample photo right here of a water line replacement. So they will be um, replacing the water line uh, throughout the entire Raspberry Lane loop. Um, and this here shows the open trench and then putting in a new water line as an example of the, of the type of work uh, that'll, be, that'll be going on. The next major component are the street improvements. Um, the street improvements will be a um, basically a reconstruction of the roadway, um, starting with the subgrade, <clears throat> excuse me. So they'll demo everything, the existing pavement, um, the curb and gutter, and then do some, uh, recompaction and reconditioning of the, of the subgrade and then build the new roadway up from there. Um, with the, uh, five inches, five inch asphalt mat on the top and then a uh, new curb and gutter along the edges. Uh, so, what to expect? Um, first off, as I start on this, this part of the presentation, we, we certainly understand that this is going to be a, a big project for the neighborhood. Um, it's going to be, you know, pretty inconvenient at times and a big disturbance with the neighborhood. Um, and we know there's going to be issues that come up as we go through the project and, you know, bear with us as we try to deal with those issues. But. I know everybody up here is going to be, you know, committed to making sure we get this project done as smoothly as we possibly can. So, um, oops, go back there real quick. Sorry. Uh, so, things to expect: the project will be phased, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later in this presentation. We're going to do certain components at certain times. So, um, once they move out from in front of your your particular residence, doesn't mean they may not be back for another phase of the project. Um, there'll be some temporary road surface. So, for example, after they um, open the trench and install the new water line, they'll put some temporary gravel down over the trench. So there'll be some temporary uh, gravel areas. Um, there will be periods of uh, limited and restricted access um, when they're working on certain components. Um, 
whether it be water line installation or service connections, which will impact the driveways, which we'll talk a little bit about as well. And then at certain times, there may be the need for uh, temporary parking areas if um, areas that you normally don't park at aren't accessible at that at any given time. Um, so the project phasing, this is the uh, uh, part that's been updated and changed since the last public meeting. Um, so based on discussions with uh, the contractor, um, we've we've changed up the phasing plan. So we initially had the phasing plan where we would break it up in more or less quarters and basically do pretty much everything in that quarter and then move on to the next one. Um, but that's not the plan at this point. So um, the phasing now will be to uh, break it up into four four phases. Um, with the first phase being the waterline uh, connection on North Monument Lake Road. Um, there'll be a short connection there that will be done in the first phase. Uh, phase two will be the waterline replacement throughout the entire Raspberry Lane uh, loop starting on the, I believe the east end working to the west intersection with North Monument Lake Road. The third phase will be the service connections. Once the water, water main has been replaced, um, you know, tested and activated and all that, then they will come through and install all the new service connections one by one for each resident. And then the fourth and final phase will be the roadway reconstruction once all the water line work has been completed. And then the hatched areas on the map, which we'll see on the next slide will show where we have temporary parking areas if they're needed. So, uh, and we'll we'll talk about this and Jay will talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I'll give the highlights here. So over on the left side is the North Monument Lake Road con connection, the red, the red line there. Um, that will probably be the least impactful portion of the project for the for the neighborhood. And then the green line um, starting again, starting on the east end of the Raspberry Lane loop is the new water line replacement. That's the phase two. And then the phase three, which isn't shown on here, it's just the service connections for each, each of the residences. I assume again, starting on probably on the east end and then working around towards the, the west end. And then the final phase, which is the blue hatching will be the uh, roadway reconstruction. Um, so again, just some examples of things to expect um, in the upper right, uh, we have the, you know, as we showed before the water line trench open trench, uh, maybe a trench box there and then installing the new water line. Uh, on the bottom left, um, this is a project where they had, uh, we were uh, reconstructing a road and basically the road has been completely. Um, you know, demolished, they've taken out the pavement, the curb and gutter, and they're, they're just reworking the. The subgrade getting ready to build the, the roadway back up again. Also, things to expect when they do the connections, the install the new service connections, they will, the, the connections will go to a point outside your residence. They won't be obviously going inside the residence, but um, they will go to the, the stop. And one is pictured here in a driveway in the red circle where they will replace the service connection to the stop in the driveway. So there will be impacts there in the concrete, which once it's uh, installed will be uh, repaired. They will also be demolishing the uh, old booster station, which is on the uh, east intersection of North Monument Lake Road. Or I'm sorry, west, yep, west, my bad. Next slide. And here's kind of an overview of the schedule and uh, Jay will talk about this in a little more detail. Um, so construction contract was awarded May 3rd. Um, we anticipate construct construction starting in July thereabouts. Um, we're a week or so out from that. Um, 
substantially complete in October. And by substantially complete, that means um, the infrastructure is essentially um, operable and usable, um, even though there may be some final things to, you know, fix, install, clean up, things of that nature. And then the, the final completion will be basically clean up and close out of the project. And again, I'll let Jay, you can talk about this a little bit more, but whether or not those dates may be a little bit sooner or later. So um, I guess, uh, yeah, maybe we'll go okay. talk about the schedule a bit and then we can open it up for questions. Yeah, the, um, the dates are um, fairly accurate. Um, we're, we're intending to start the week of the 12th of July. And um, our intent is to, like James had said, um, install the water line. Um, so you will probably see a surveyor out there that week. Um, so please don't pull the stakes up. <laughs> um, but you'll see a surveyor out there. So you'll see activity. Um, and then uh, come the following Monday is when we will start to do the work on the on the pipe itself. Our intent is to minimize um, the effects on the residents. That's our intent. So that's we're intending just to do the full loop, still leave you in service, leave you access, and then um, and then when we do the tie-ins, we can do the tie-ins, maybe two, three? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, two or three a day. So our intent is hopefully if you get shut down in the morning, uh, you'll be back up by the afternoon when you get home and stuff. So again, just trying to minimize uh, the um, disruption in your service as minimal as we can. So that is the intent. And then we will leave you, um, um, as James said, um, a, a temporary um, uh, access into there. We'll, we'll cover the trenches so that you guys do have access um, throughout. Now, there will be issues where you guys are going to, where we're going to have to reduce the traffic down through that area, but we're just trying to narrow it down and, and minimize the impact um, on you. Um, then once we get the water line and the services done, um, barring if we have any conflicts with existing utilities and so forth, but, um, but then we'll come in and we'll, uh, do the subgrade and then, and then come in and do the asphalt too. And I just need to get it. I, I need to narrow down, um, the schedule as far as the asphalt, but I, I would like to bring them in and just at least get the the bottom lift on that whole area there. So that that's that's our intent. Um, as far as access, um, I know uh, reviewing um, the meeting notes from um, the previous uh, meeting. I know there's concern with um, handicap access uh, for at least one specific site that I know. Um, I'm, I'm not sure of any others, so, um, but we will make sure and, and accommodate that so that there is no problems with that. I was just going to mention real quick. So we think the the phasing plan as it's done now will be less impactful as far as, you know, getting in and out of the neighborhood and and restricted access that kind of thing. So hopefully it'll be um, easier um, with this new phasing plan. So yeah, that's correct. So um, that's basically it in a nutshell. But though we're gonna try, we're gonna meet that schedule or beat it, but. We'll just go with that schedule that you guys saw. <laughs> so, um, 
So um, that's it for me. Did you? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I've got all of them crossed right now. <laughs> um, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Nothing so far. Okay. I just. Pardon. Um, could possibly be. Yes. So that's that's the that's my concern too. Yes, correct. We're going to try to prevent any washouts. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody speaks, they can't hear you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. He said they can. So, yes, to minimize the impact to the subgrade, because we don't we don't want that subgrade getting um, saturated. So it's our intent to try to get it covered up as soon as possible. Our hours will be, I think, in the specifications, it's seven to five is what we'll be working. Start time. Okay, well, we'll take that under consideration. Uh, the the seven o'clock and five o'clock is driven by the current town ordinances based on the project. Um, but the rowdy is this new method of uh, how they're going to do this. It's almost like a uh, like a moving target. They're only going to be in one area at a time, and once they get the the main in the ground and gets buried, then they'll move to the next section. So a different set of 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 units would be impacted each day as they move along, barring any any you know if we hit a power line or something unmarked that could delay things a bit. But, um, you know, as traffic gets in and out of there, the, the rest, they you know, the 90 or 85% of the neighborhood would able would be able to go out the other way or get by where they're at because uh, there'll be certain points where they're going to have to close the road for a short period of time to get across it because the road, the main does switch at a certain point. But most of the time, the, there'll be a one lane to get around that, that 50 or 80 foot stretch, whatever they have blocked off. So better than previously, we had 12 units and one fourth of the property blocked for a month. So we got everything done. This, we're kind of doing the long way by putting all the main in first, burying it, going back and doing the services uh, one by one as they work through that. And then at the very end, all the concrete work, the driveways get replaced that got broken, the, the curbing gutter gets laid and then the asphalt once the subgrade is prepped. Um, so it's a little more efficient way to do things. Okay. This is Sean, the HOA president. So mm -hmm. the original plan was, mm -hmm. from what we understood in April was tear up all the asphalt first, mm -hmm. then do some ground prep, then cut a certain 10 to 12 uh, units would be affected. Mm -hmm. That's changed. You're just going to go down the center of the road and create a channel, essentially put a man box in there, put your line in, rip out the old. And in that process, you're going to cover that with some kind of retrieved asphalt or subgrade, like you say. Will there be metal plate bridges across that that we would drive over? Or is every day at the end of the day, they just regrade that stuff over? That's what I would really like to understand. The um, The intent is to backfill whatever we've um, exposed and put the water line in 
it's the intent is to have it backfilled. Now, if we have to have a road plate for it, um, for say perhaps the end of the pipe and whatnot, we can put something in there for that. We're not going to open up anything more than what we can get covered. Let's so it would be the width of what you need in the workspace area, not the entire street no. going up 20 feet across. Correct. Okay. That, that helps a lot with the visual concept and spatial issues. And when you say that we have some areas that you're just going to have to close off the road, are you talking two, three hours, half the day? You don't really know because it's a moving target. I can understand that, but a, a best guesstimate that you can say to that. Um, I, half day. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be uh, very long just to get from one side over to the other side of the cul-de-sac there. So uh, half a day max. Mm -hmm. And like Jay say is um, whatever we dig up, we're going to be backfilling that. So it's going to be drivable uh, at the end of the day. Um, so that is the intent. That's pretty much how we put our water line in there. So, yeah. Okay. And, you know, our trench is only going to be about five feet wide max. So if you can visualize that. That's, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like it's nowhere near as wide as it, what I originally had thought. The mailboxes were going to be moved. Will they be moved? Or because the way you're now phasing it, it may not be necessarily necessary until the very end of the project. Am I correct about that? Yes, you are correct. They won't need to be moved at this point in time. Um, Hopefully they won't have to be moved at all. That that's what we're trying to do. So we don't have to relocate those. Okay. So. And then the two individuals, I know you mentioned, you know, of one that uh, they definitely have a handicap issue. Um, there might be another two. We have a gentleman here tonight who actually just had back surgery and walks that lane. So we're very grateful that you were delayed in a way, but at the same time, it's frustrating, of course, but uh, that individual just happens to be in an area where they have a driveway so that they could get service to and from their home for a handicap issue. Um, and you're saying you could take care of that. What do you mean by you can accommodate that? Just in that you'll make sure that their area, wherever you're cutting up is covered that end of day or during the day when they need to go to a therapy appointment, someone can get to them in their driveway. Yes. Okay. Yes. If I may, we would need that resident to email us um, with that information so that we can work to accommodate him or her in that situation. And, you know, just like some of these, um, the first residence meeting that we had, we did hear and consider all of the concerns. And that's why we do have some changes because that's been our hope from the town side is to best accommodate you residents. Um, so things like that, any residents that, you know, I'm not saying we can accommodate all of them, but, um, if you can bring any of that to our attention, then we'll see what we can do. Okay. And then the biggest concern that I have, um, probably there's two major concerns, but the biggest one I have is the drainage issue in the neighborhood. Those drains are abysmal. They're, they're terrible. And they were originally discussed, I think it was Audie that actually brought that up in the first meeting in April. And it was said that they would be replaced or would be repaired or be addressed. Is that still a, a plan? Yes, it is still a plan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, my understanding at, at both of those intersections, there's an, there's a, an inlet there and both of those will be replaced along with the ones that are on the kind of near the curve on the west, west side of the loop. The southwest loop. Okay. Yep. Great. The second bigger concern is originally we had temporary parking addressed and it was going to be along North Monument Lake Road in the, I guess you'd call it an easement. And the bigger concern that I have is that our grassed area of landscaped area that is 17 feet wide where they suggested we do temporary parking. We don't have any, have any knowledge that we can be driving on that and having vehicles go on it and the danger it could pose to our residents. So if you could address that better and help us understand how that would work, because it, there's also a natural habitat area that's protected. We don't go over there, except if we absolutely have to. We might walk our dogs there, but we certainly aren't taking vehicles over there. 
We have a moose that comes through there. We know there's coyotes. We have a, two bears that come through there and lots of deer. So parking vehicles there suggests, okay, well, we're once, for one, we're interrupting the wildlife, but two, can we actually do that and not be violating some rules? And three, and probably more importantly, can that ground support that much traffic? And how would you park there without banging into somebody or getting on and off of it? Shut up now and let you guys answer all that. So, all right, I, I, judging by your question, it sounds like you're talking about the area on the west side where there's some grass and I think there's maybe some trees there. Right. Uh, that area is, just keep in mind, that's one of three locations that we have designated on a map for temporary parking. If if parking is to occur there, um, we would, I guess it would be up to the residents who, who needs to park there as far as how many cars would fit if necessary. But with this method that we're using now, there, to me, uh, the temporary parking is probably not going to be used uh, very often at all. And, and, and if it is, it's going to be very few people because most people are going to have access to your driveways unless that's the area where they're working on that particular day. Um, if you did have to park there, that wildlife area you're talking about, I, I've had many discussions with, with owners across the, the creek area on the other side who were always concerned with that. You know, and through our research, we found out that that area is is a wildlife area because they put signs up many years ago. It, it does not show up as a designated wildlife area on any maps that the fish and wildlife that we talked to about. Um, and then most of that area on that wildlife area is town property. And we did drill a well there recently, and we got the same questions about disturbing wildlife and all. Uh, we all we do have a plan to change out those signs just because we've had enough that they've been probably there 40 years or so. Uh, we understand that that some group of Boy Scouts put those up many years ago. Uh, so we're going to get some similar signs with similar wording and replace those uh, at some point before uh, before the fall sets in. But as far as parking up there. Uh, if there was any damage to the grass or, or things like that, we would take care of that as part of the, uh, the punch list or the cleanup before the project ended. We do have funds set aside for, for that kind of stuff. And again, you got to keep in mind, we, we want to be a good neighbor. This is a, this is a much needed project. You're going to have the, the best new, newest water main with new water services all the way into your driveway to your actual isolation valve. So hopefully our water guys uh, like someone told me once, uh, we've had so many breaks here over the years that uh, when they get the call to come in for a water break, sometimes their kids ask, Daddy, is it Raspberry Lane? Um, because I've been here 21 years, and that is by far the, I've spent more time on breaks in those areas than any other part of town. So that's, what, that's kind of the other part that drove this project besides the road condition was the need to put the whole 2,000 feet of water main in there. And, and go with the extra step and actually change out all the connections all the way to wherever your isolation valve is. And the valves will be replaced also. So you're gonna have brand new services basically. Your only responsibility would be from those brand new valves and where it goes you know, from there on into your house. Um, so hopefully that answers some of your, your questions about that, that particular parking area. Uh, again, if there's any damage, we will we will take care of it as as we do with any of our other projects. We we try to leave it better than we started, and in this case, um, between the water mains and the new road, new curbing gutter, uh, you, you're going to get a really exceptional product at the end of this. Tom, if I can interrupt you, we do have an online question that we'll take now, um, and then we'll move to the next any in person questions. Thank you for taking this question. So all of the questions when I initially raised my hand have been answered. But one thing that does come to mind is um, with as many freezes as you've stated we've had, um, I had a contractor come out when my, la my last freeze this last winter. Um, he suggested that possibly that the 
a line to the house and the line that comes off are not deep enough, maybe not below the freeze line. Would that be addressed if that's found? Uh, yes, we have a, a, a water standard that says any water services and water mains have to be a, a minimum of it's either five feet or five and a half. It's uh, five feet, so they'd have to have a five feet bury. If we do find lines that are shallower than that, we'll we'll just dig the extra six inches or foot, whatever's needed. So that makes sense. Yeah. But the, but my 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 question is, is you dig that extra foot, foot and a half, whatever it is. And then that drops our line to our house. Are you going to connect that back to our house line? Uh, no, we would only go as far as the the valve itself in the home. So if you drop, if you drop, the, I'm saying if you drop the valve, mm -hmm. and there's our and and our line to our house is at one level, and you drop that valve another six inches, it's going to be disconnected. There's not going to be any accommodation for that. No, the, the we'll make sure before that line gets buried that your service is is uh, leak tight, that the connections are made, that the the water is flowing, that there's no leaks. Uh, we will note though if your if the line on your side of the valve is shallower, we we would let you know that. Something to be aware of. It is pretty rare, in, at least in this town, that a line freezes because it's too shallow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I get a freeze on my line just about every year, even though I drip water sometimes. And I was just concerned about that. Is your is your particular meter in a uh, outside closet? Because about half the units have meters outside in there. It's a it's, heater it's, an it's an outside on the west side. Yes. So it's next to your furnace. Yep. Um, I I know Raspberry Lane is the only neighborhood that the water guys. Uh, try to notify every year about uh, freeze protection. Uh, one of the things I, I can remember a few years ago, um, some lady called me out there to inspect uh, the good job that she had done. And she had taken her door, which has louvers in it because your furnace is in there. And she sealed she every sealed. one of them louvers up, drip tight. And it was it was great to see. And, and I had to break the bad news to her that the uh, louvers are there so that your furnace has fresh air to part of the combustion process and you're going to have problems. So we ended up having to help her take those slots out where the front, where the louvers are to get that fresh air and recommended that you, you insulate those particular lines that are outside. And if you need to put a heat trace, uh, we've, we've been called out there many a night for frozen meters. Right. And mo most of the time it's, it, it's those bitter cold nights where it gets 10, 15 below. And I've seen people put space heaters in there to help sometimes. Uh, we, we do what we can to help um, on those particular cases. Some of you are lucky enough to have your meters in the garage um, away from the wall. Those, those are the best locations. Um, you know, so when those happen, uh, obviously we, we get the call a lot of times to come shut the water off. And, uh, you know, our, our guys just know that there's there's about half the units there that have meters in that outside furnace. And, and if there's anything else we can do uh, to help mitigate that, we, we, we're more than willing to listen. Um, okay, but I, yeah, so, so there's gonna be, just to bring it back around, because I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying, if you drop, Say it's above the freeze line, and and I hate to bring this up again, but if it's if it's above the freeze line and you drop that main from the street, six inches, you're going to make sure it's connected back up to my main and let me know that mine's not below the freeze line and I need to get that fixed. That that would be the recommendation, but but like okay. I told you, we don't um, as many line breaks and service line breaks that I've seen over the years. I I don't believe I've ever seen a an actual. Uh, copper line freeze that wasn't buried uh, that we found was wasn't buried enough. At depth, um, okay. okay. We we have five feet depth that when they when they were put in, um, if you come across one that's at four feet, again that's that's less. But is it something to worry about? I wouldn't necessarily be concerned at four feet. If you got to three feet, it might be a concern. The deepest frost I think I've seen around here in the coldest of the winters has been around 32 to 36. Right, three uh, feet, I've seen that as well. Right, and the area that you live in is pretty hardened sandstone. 
right. I'm sure when they go to put the water main in they're they're going to see that quite a bit. Um, so again, I think making the connection with your new valve, um, making sure it connects and, and there's not a chance that it's going to pull off the valve or anything like that. Uh, we check all those things uh, just as we would any other service connection. Um, yeah. it's far, from the valve from the valve to the house, though we can't we can't run that line all the way to your house. Uh, if we were to do no, that, that's that's try. that's not what I'm asking. I'm just making sure that if there's a drop, that you're going to be able to connect that main to my to my house system. Yes, we we will connect it all the way up to the to the valve and make sure the connection on the other side that goes to your house is is drip tight. Okay, and then so there's going to be no there's going to be no interrupt for emergency vehicles, mail, as you see, foresee it right now. There's going to be because we have a lot of older residents here, not just handicapped, but some right. some older folks, and you know I can't see them parking down on Monument Lake Road and then walking up to their units on the other end of the cul-de-sac. So I just wanted to make sure from that perspective that you know they're going to be able to get through one way or the other. Yes, I, I believe that we're not, we don't anticipate um, near the the issues based on the original plan versus now. Because okay. there, there should be a lane of traffic able to get through, except for the that maybe that one or two days that they have to jump to the other side of the road, and that would be a, a temporary. You know, there would be people there that is, if, if somebody needed to get by, uh, we would make a, a accommodation for that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, I have a question. Um, with when we shut off the the water to each of the, the two or three homes that we do do at a time, can we be notified a, a day or two before so that we can know to to accumulate some water or take our showers, you know, the night before or whatever that is, so that uh, yes. we can prepare appropriately. Yes, we'll we'll notify you. Um, you know, probably what day two before on on the process and we'll let the individuals know. Um, we could do handouts yeah. with flyers and just kind of door hangers or whatever and just say, hey, this is our intent for your three sections. That would be very nice because I know that's happened before, but I just wanna make sure we uh, set that up for this uh, mm -hmm. project as well. Uh, I'm excited to see this get done. Um, and I'm excited to see the changes from the last meeting to this meeting to, to make some of those accommodations. So one, I wanted to say thanks. And two, um, I, I appreciate your time. So thanks. Thank you. Just working out the screen light. So okay. okay. So we have a property that still is accessible through our neighborhood. Yep. It's a private residence and I'm just trying to be neighborly. They have been contacted and they are been notified. They have a gate. And so how would you notify them that their water is going to get turned off? I mean, that's, that's like a concern. I mean, we don't have any control over that. Well, you guys, hopefully first get. thing I'll tell you about that house down the hill by the lake. Yeah. They're not on your water system. Oh, okay. They're in a county, they're on a well and they have a septic. Okay. So they're 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 they've been notified anyway because of the impacts of, of maybe limiting access for half a day to their house and we'll re notify them with uh with this new plan. But they okay. I did talk to them personally the okay. first time. I believe they were realtors, if I remember. But um Yeah. So yes, we did take that into account. Okay. And uh, and I was the one, uh, we use a door hanger bag. I'm sure okay. you all noticed yes. it. Um, yeah. I'm the one who hung it on that. Okay. They have a little keypad yeah. to punch in to get in that gate. I hung it on there and made sure that they got the invite to this okay. meeting also. So anything that came up along those lines, we would definitely go out of our way to, to make sure they're notified. Yeah, thank you. Just a random question. How many people received the next door notification regarding this meeting? Oh, that's good. I just wanted to take to see where we were getting the word out 
So we'll use those same lines of communication as long as far as, and also our website and our other social media outlets too, but you guys will be notified paper and next door. I, my concern is with driveway access. And I know I'm getting into the weeds with the details, but we've, we've gone to this new phase approach, which is grand. Can we, is there some way we can look to maybe, those are all two car garage driveways. Can we phase the driveway so we still have access in and out as best we can? I know it might not be available in all spots. We've got some areas with two valves, some with one. And so is every place gonna get their own valves? So a couple questions there. We will just replace the valves that are existing. Yes, uh, every unit that we're aware of has its own individual valve. Majority of them are in the driveways, but there are a few that are between driveways in that landscape section right next to your big massive transformers. So that's <laughs> that's going to be an issue that may take a little longer because hard to get equipment in there if you got power lines running right across it. Uh, but we are aware of the ones that have it in the driveway and the ones that don't. Uh, one of the things that we'll have to make sure of when they get to that point is we know we know also there's some irrigation taps. Um, and we need to pinpoint um, where those are tapped on the main. I don't know if we've ever located those before. So we'll we'll be out there when the contractor gets close to those and and, and we'll just have to uh, be careful on those. Having access to at least one side of your driveway or the other is, is huge. We have deliveries, trash once a week that is driveway trash, and people are going to need to ditch hop. And I, there's no other way around it. If you leave some kind of access, if you phase those driveways in, we're available. You can maybe give somebody access to their driveway to put their trash out, to mm -hmm. let the deliveries get across the ditch, to do what they need to do. I'm just spitballing here, but it's it's something I I think is worth considering. Yes, and I and I think that uh, on those areas where because they're going to know ahead of time where they need to be that next day, and if when you notify the owners of that, to me that there's a lot of things that that owner can do if you don't want your car trapped in your garage for half a day. You could talk to your neighbor about putting it right there, or you could park in those little open areas that are scattered throughout your subdivision, or you could use that temporary parking. But everything we do there is going to be temporary. Again, trying to lessen the impact. Lack of mobility in some patients in that situation because that access to that drive. Right. We got people quite literally. I, I think we're gonna we're gonna be able to to look at as long as we know that that the the number of units that we need to be uh, take a little more time in figuring out how we're gonna uh, keep that access. I think we'll make those as the as a project moves along. Because uh, we'll know we'll know who needs that that extra way to get out of their house, and we'll see. Looking at it, I mean, the contractor is going to work with the town and the engineer hand in hand, right? And and there'll be a stretch where they can move through pretty quick because we don't have to do anything other than we planned. There'll be some that when we get in front of them, we we need to we need to see knock on that resident's door and say, hey, we're going to be taking you your access to your driveway out for 10 out or eight hours, whatever it ends up being. 
um, is it possible to to maybe pull your vehicle and put it in the driveway next to it? Things like that. Or I, I think there's a lot of ways to solve those, but we're just going to have to handle those on an individual basis as we get to them. But we need that list of people that that need that that kind of accommodation. And we'll do the best we can. And we are not anticipating any issues based on that. And, and if something comes up, we'll we'll figure out a way to resolve it. So let's get some clarification on was it James? Jay. Okay. Uh, and what you had said, James was that we would be starting on the east side. The original plan was we would start on the west side. Is Was that just a confusionary part? I just didn't clarify. Yeah, I, I think we made that change when we changed the phasing. Okay. So we switched. We start on the east side, work through and down through to the southwest side, and then back to the west side. You follow that loop. You're starting up there and going around the other way. Correct. Okay. Starting from the top and then working around okay. to the bottom. Okay. So that impacts you immediately. So you got to get in touch with Mr. 302 here. <laughs> because in his driveway, you can definitely see an area where he can only park his vehicle in a certain place. And then guess what? There's the water main. And he only has one point of entrance to the house because the back of the house is being torn up by our neighbors. They're doing a huge landscaping project to get their water runoff and everything else taken care of. So for anyone in those first one, two, three, four units in your, that building? Well, really. Yeah, those, those four units, they definitely are gonna get impacted quite a bit. Um, with that said, we originally were gonna move the mailboxes. I understand we don't know, we no longer need to do that, but that's also where our guest parking is. So if you're starting on that side, in phase one, how far does phase one start and start tearing into the ground to do the, the demo work and then put the new line in? Is that six units, 10 units on that east side? So. Okay. Okay. Move down. Okay. And Gary gets to have a trench in front of his house that's either covered over or something, but it's backfilled, something. Okay. So it's literally house by or unit by unit. Yeah, totally different. Which is, yeah, very good. If that's what you plan to do, it's house by house or unit by unit, great. But that was my biggest concern because tearing up and doing 10 or 12 at a time, <laughs> no, there's no way we could handle that. Yeah. I'd kill you. <laughs> As an HOA president, I won't I be coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a threat. It was just no. a joke. <laughs> And just for clarification, no interruption for emergency services, the police, law enforcement, they should still have full access. It might be one lane travel that they have to do and then switch over to the other side of the lane to do that travel. But for the most part, even if it's blocked for four to six hours one day, there's either gonna be, hey, they go around the other side or they come around and they might have to walk, but somehow they'll get to wherever they need to get. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just gonna put it out there for everybody in the room that's here with me. Is there anything else you want me to ask that you don't wanna to have to come up here and do? All good? Okay, yeah, good, good, good question. We originally had talked that we were going to start in May and go through and not be done probably until second week of December. Um, now with the new sh schedule shift and such, 
my big concern is rain, hail, the washout situation. I understand what you're going to try and do to mitigate the amount of money you're spending to try and backfill. You don't want that ruined. That sub layer is very critical to your, your final asphalt layer and all those things. But the other concern is, is we have the town come through and plow. It starts snowing in October here. And it, how would they plow on something like that? And more importantly, how does our snow removal vendor come through and take care of the driveways? And then the further issue is what kind of muddy mess are we looking at? And if that is what it's going to be, what do we do to mitigate it? With that comes the kids and school because they all hang out down there at the corner of North Monument Lake Road and Raspberry Lane on the east side. There's the bus stop there. We have Cars parked there, where do the kids go? That street is a nightmare. People fly through there thinking, I'm in the country, I can do whatever. And they, they speed and you can't see the blind curve at the top or the blind alley at the bottom, so. Jay, his wheels are turning. Yeah, there was a com conversation about maybe having a police presence or a sheriff presence there just because we might have cars parked there, but perhaps now it means having a more regular presence of a, an officer of some, some side, a speed sign there, um, something of that nature. We have access at least one half of the garage. They can make allowances to move their cars over there. There is no sidewalk. I mean, the sidewalk there. So the street access is your ingress and egress. You block it and you take it away. You're telling people. So I don't know if you want to recap all that because that's a lot. <laughs> what are those bullet points? Well. As far as the weather, I, I, I can't give you an answer on that, but it is our intent to. <laughs> yeah, it is not our intent to be working when the weather starts coming because we know this is a higher elevation, so we understand um, that situation. So I, we're going to try to protect that as much as we can. And that's kind of the intent with what we're doing as far as the phasing is concerned. Okay. I, I can answer a little bit of the, the question about snow plowing. Uh, even when we do get those snows in, in September, October, they're fairly quick events. Uh, I've been around here long enough to know that you can get a foot of snow in October. That's happened before. Um, but they melt pretty quick, and by that time of the project with substantial completion scheduled for October, we're not anticipating any snow events. Uh, the last thing to do when you get into that time frame in the September, October would be pave the road. Yeah, that's about it. The water mains will be up, and your services will be running. The only that's impact would be the road and. You know, we'll just have to adjust uh, accordingly if, if we need to run a plow truck through there. And our guys are experienced enough to know that when you're plowing a dirt road, it's a little different than than a paved road. So that's the best answer uh, I could give for that. Uh, we also do, besides water, we do plowing. So right. Right. You know, one stop shop. Yeah. Okay. And then as far as the kids in school, because, you know, August school's back in session. Right. And if we do have temporary parking there, you're, you're what you're suggesting is at least, hey, you're going to notify maybe two homes. You're going to not be able to use your driveway for six to eight hours, 10 hours. Perhaps you could park here. And, and then that might mitigate the amount of heavy use in that area where the kids could still be safe staying on the side of the road. Would that be a good summation of that? I'm not so sure why how to answer the the school kids thing. Um, the bay again by that time by the time school starts, uh, you're they're most likely going to be halfway done, okay. or close to it, and and coming down on the west side. Uh, so they won't be anywhere near that east entrance. 
because that's where they're starting. Okay. Um, and they just, uh, you know, it's, it's like I, we tell our guys every year when, when school starts, uh, school is on, even when they pull out of the public work shop, they have to be aware of that and that there's going to be kids waiting to catch buses in, you know, it's a standard spill that, that Steve would give our crews uh, as the seasons change, as the conditions change. Uh, we're, we're very aware of, of that period of time and we'll be extra vigilant. And if we need to make, you know, some safety changes to to mitigate any risk, we'll, we'll do that. You want to come up, Woody? So the question: do This will this affect our water bill or anything like this? It will not. You will, you will not see any change in your in your water bill. This this project is. Uh, well, if we were if we were changing your meters, then I would warn you that your mil, your bill may go up because if you're putting a new meter in, that means I mean, it, I'll say about water meters, and we're not doing water meters on your project, but water meters when they when water meters fail, they always fail in favor of the consumer, which means they either slow down or they stop working, and until we change it out, you're getting free water. That's typically what happens. Sorry, strike that from the record, yes. Just to old, old, uh, old Denver Highway, oh, I'm going to get it again, Monument North, Monument Lake Road. Where, I guess with the kids and the traffic and as tight of quarters as we got, how much and where do you plan on staging all your equipment? And And with that comes the traffic and the congestion that comes with the workers that go with that equipment. So where do you guys plan on congregating and parking and staging your equipment? Because that could have... On staging um, in the city yard, just west of the project. Okay. Yeah, the city is allowing us to stage in that yard and so that's where the um, equipment everything will be out there so yeah we won't have anything on site and just speaking on behalf of the kids um when they start school if there's any accommodations needed we'll make sure the transportation understands the project and they'll be the best they'll be the best people to determine the safest pickup and drop off based off of their guidelines. So that's kind of out of our control. So will you or somebody from the city be in touch with the school and let them know, at least give them a heads up on that? Can we get signs for like, for where, where we can park that we want? Uh, yes, we can, we can arrange for that. We'll say temporary parking for Raspberry Lane residents in the two designated areas. And then we'll also put one on that grassy area, but I, I don't expect a whole lot of people to park there just because it looks nice. Um, hey, if you could put them up before the 4th, it might be a big help to us. <laughs> questions we can kind of close this up i do have my business cards if you email me i'll make sure steve and tom and um anybody else that needs information passed along i can help with that i'd i'd like to just say before we do wrap up that i will probably be on this project every single day um so feel free to flag me down i'm in a in a monument work truck and again i know uh, trash is one of our concerns also. If I've got to have myself or some of my guys, you know, roll a tote down the hill in order to make it so that uh, waste management can pick it up, that's exactly what we'll do. Um, don't get me wrong, there's going to be hiccups in this. I ask for your patience, uh, but but we as a town of Monument, we're going to work with you guys and, and try to make it as uh, little impact as possible on you all. Perfect answer. 
Yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys for putting some extra effort into it, helping us come up with a better plan and giving us real details that we can actually work with. It's a nightmare as president trying to communicate and answer every question that comes up and you're going, I don't know. I'm sure the town has an idea. Um, the last and final thing is uh, with regard to signage, um, we have installed some of our own signs just to let people know that's not an area to go park in and just go camping down at the river, at the lake or the river. Um, so any of the signage that you would provide, if, if that's something you want to discuss first before we you know, mount it or whatever, I'm happy to do that. If you want me to install them, I'll do that stuff. Pretty much always around in the HOA at some point, so I'll see you somebody. It might behoove us to have uh, this presentation emailed back to us, um, just so in case we have a resident or owner wasn't able to be a part of it. I don't have to spin out explain all this. If you wanted to send it to HOA at raspberrymountain.org, that would be great. Yeah, and this presentation was also recorded. So, yep. So we can. I'll send. I'll send you or that email the link. I know I have your email, so if I forget it, um, yep. Thank you. All. The uh, last thing I'll say before I guess unless anybody else wants to talk after. Um, just so you know, because we're all taxpaying citizens a monument, this this project all in all is is going to end up being slightly over a million dollars. Uh, the town had a, a twenty two million dollar COP bond issue that passed last November, uh, and this is one of the fifteen major projects that was near the top of the list. Uh, so we just want you to know that we're utilizing that money as best we can in biggest bang for the biggest effect. So uh, we appreciate your, your showing up tonight and um, asking anything. And there'll be questions that come up after the fact, and you've got plenty of uh, people within the town or the contractor that we can, uh, we can get your question answered. Or you might have a neighbor that had a question that wasn't able to be here tonight. Then uh, let us know. And then just a reminder, if you can let us know of other units that we need to be aware of as far as any ADA issues or any medical related issues, uh, you know, part of our job is to let, is to not only try to accommodate those, but we also uh, deal with the fire, the police, the school district uh, all the time on all of our projects. And I actually have, to, I actually sit on the Tri Lakes Fire Board. So they are very aware of this project and as long as they know what they what they can get through and what they might have problems, they know if they respond to this area that they'll know what they're going to come up against. So we appreciate you coming tonight.